Hi guys and girls, I'm Obsidian Ant and welcome back to Elite Dangerous. Today I wanted to take a bit of a look on the dark side of planets. Now we all know as you approach the dark side of planets they more often than not brighten up and illuminate due to the ambient light near the uh, galactic core or the other surrounding nebula and such. But if, like me, you're out near the Formidine Rift or beyond or closer to Beagle Point then you can go around to the dark side of planets and what you'll get is exactly that, the dark side. And yes, it's so dark here that you do indeed need your ship lights if you're down on the ground and certainly you'll need your SRV lights. Now, back in late 2015, early 2016, when Horizons was brand new, you could find a number of planets exactly like this back in the human inhabited bubble. In fact, quite often I'd drive around these settlements and the bases on planets like this because basically it was pitch black there and the only places that were lit up were those by your SRV lights and those which the lights from the settlements would reach. Now some people tell me there are planets like this back in the bubble but I haven't come across any so if you have any specific locations to mention I'd love to hear about it. Now the reason it's so dark out here is due to the lack of stars. Firstly the galactic core is occluded because we're that much further away from it that there's more galactic dust making it that much darker. Secondly, there's no nearby nebula. And thirdly, the number of stars out here are quite sparse. In fact, if I were to travel further away, either below the galactic core or further towards the edge, these places would get darker still. Now you can see the ship lights reflecting all the way over here. They've got a reach of about one to one and a half kilometers. Now some people feel that that's not enough and I entirely agree. But apparently it's purely down to the resource cost of having far reaching lights. Most games don't have areas as large as they do in Elite, so if you start illuminating 10 kilometers or more, it becomes a very resource intensive. And here you can see on the galaxy map what I was talking about, we're quite a way out here, and you can see the galactic core isn't all that bright. Now I had in mind to go to some planets closer to home. This nebula is NGC 7822. I haven't visited here since early 2016. And one thing I do remember about this place is that it was very dark inside. Essentially, the nebula itself occludes everything, including the galactic core. When you're inside here, although from certain places you can see the galactic core, for the most part, you can't see it. And as you can see, it is quite dark. Most of the systems within this place have a huge number of stars. In fact, all different types of stars from brown dwarfs right up to blue-white type stars. Now, the reason I bring this all up is not to state the obvious but rather because a number of people I've seen on both the forums as well as in the comments section of my videos have been asking if it's possible to actually find the dark-sided planets. So yes, you can find them if you're willing to travel, but unfortunately they're not scattered everywhere. And even in locations like this, they can still brighten up by the ambient light. Now, quite a few months ago, Frontier did address this issue and they've said that the current solution, the solution whereby you approach the dark side of a planet and it starts illuminating up, as we're going to see here, is just a temporary measure. In fact, I'll link the information below where Frontier actually talk about this, because they do go into quite some technical detail about how the current system works and what they plan to do to change it. So right now, the surfaces illuminate in an artificial manner, and that's sort of based off the amount of lighting that's around it. That's why this one's red, and it actually enhances the brightness of the uh, nebula itself as well. But eventually, what Frontier plan on doing is having a system whereby all the planetary surfaces are directly lit by the ambient light of the galaxy itself. So this should give some much more satisfying results. Now like I say, I have been out to NGC 7822 before, in fact it's one of my favourite nebula, but I don't get to go here as often as I'd actually like. Now at one point I did visit a planet here that had a rather dark surface and I got some great footage from it. Those of you that have been watching my videos long enough and have seen me do a lot of planetary landings will know that one of my favourite points to land on the planet is right near the Terminator. That's the area where the light side meets the dark side. From there I always found you can get some fantastic looking shadows giving some great effects to the planet itself. And what you're looking at right here is some footage of when I did precisely that. This was filmed in very early January of 2016. In fact you can see the planets are quite different Look at the coloration there, the yellow streaks, something you don't see often on regular planets now. The star in the distance there is around about 2,600 light seconds away, but even at this distance, it casts its blue hue over the entirety of the planet. 
So like I say, when I was here, this was right at the Terminator, so it's the point where the deep shadows start, and back at this point in the game, it didn't artificially illuminate right near the early stages of the Terminator, and here you can see just how dark the planet actually was. A very, very stunning location and a true joy to explore. Now I thought I'd come back here and take a look in modern times just to see if I could find these dark areas again. Now for the, both of these sets of footage, the old footage as well as the footage right here, the new footage, I've turned off all of the graphics mods so it's more of a fair comparison, like for like. You can go out and see it exactly like this. Now here is the same set of coordinates of where we were just now, but unfortunately it's on the dark side of the planet. So I had to go around and get close to the Terminator, not the exact same locations, but nonetheless it's right at the Terminator. And you can see the colours here are now very different to how they used to be. Unfortunately the sun isn't quite as low on the horizon as it is in the previous footage, but if I travelled back it actually illuminated up too much and you ended up with the red surface. But nonetheless, if you fancy finding planets with different hues, different colours, then NGC 7822 is a very good place to come. But if you're looking for striking planets, then I always recommend nowadays go head out to Ice Worlds. Often show this planet right here, and I'm regularly asked where it actually is, so I'll tell you that now, but it is a long way away. So here's the system map, but this is the type of planet that I'm always looking for, the type of moon rather, that I'm always looking for on the maps. It's got distinct coloration markings, and you know if you come to somewhere like this, there's going to be great contrast as well as great landscape. Now if you're an explorer like me, then finding great looking planets is always going to be a primary objective for you. Unfortunately, doing so is very difficult nowadays in Elite Dangerous. And although these worlds are out there, finding them is no easy task. Now with Frontier's implied reworking of exploration, then just maybe finding worlds like this will become a little bit easier. As an explorer then, any potential exploration changes are something I'm very much looking forward to, but before then, we've got Thargoids to contend with. As always, thanks for watching, and I'll catch you guys and girls next time.